hello. Hello. This isn't the kind of video that I usually do. Uh, this is on a vastly different topic from herpetology or anything herpetology related. However, um, I hope you still find it interesting. I uh, took a short hiatus. Uh, I say short, it was a couple months long. So I recently found out, recently as in a few months ago, that I am a, I, I am a part of what's known as a system. So, so a system refers to a collective of identities um, in one body uh, that formed due to repeated childhood trauma um, in what is known as, which I'm sure you're familiar with, dissociative identity disorder formerly known as multiple personality disorder. Don't worry about that. And it's a relatively unexplored topic scientifically, which I, I would love to delve into in the future. Love to do my own studies, which is easy uh, when you, you already have the, um, the material. I hope to, uh, maybe, is the word quell? Is that a word? Uh, is it some potential uh, fears that you may have about it? Um, but also, to introduce the other system members that I have been growing accustomed to. And now in the title, I probably said, uh, my alters. That's a, I, I will refrain from using that because they aren't mine. I don't own them. Uh, we share a body, but I don't own them, right? Um, I usually refer to them as um, people. <laughs> <laughs> which you know can be confusing I don't know fellas I don't know um, uh, uh, system members fellow system members right since we are all artistically inclined uh, at least most of us I thought it might be cool to um, to share uh, each rendition of uh, th th that they did of each other um, yes I this is not going to be the most informative video it's not going to be primarily educational um, on the matter of DID. However, if you would like to know at least the very basics of it or, you know, a more detailed uh, stuff of it, um, I will include links in the description to learn about all that wonderful stuff. Um, because it is a very, very nuanced topic uh, with a lot of different stuff to learn. Um, and hopefully, by watching this video, uh, if you don't already know anything about it, I will awaken um, interest on the topic in you you yes so okay so this first drawing was really just me trying to uh, illustrate the basic way that I doodle myself um, and then the one next to it is uh, an illustration of how I look in the inner world um, and now the inner world uh, and I'm, I'm gonna be referring to it a, a few times I think um, the inner world uh, in systems is basically the visualization of how memories are stored, how thoughts are processed. Um, and most si in most systems, the host, uh, like me for instance, I'm the host, um, doesn't get as much access to the inner world or as much uh, of a visualization of the inner world as most of the other alters do because um, everyone else, you know, when they're not fronting, uh, basically hangs out there right and uh, the inner the inner world um, that's where everyone looks like how they actually look like um, in there <laughs> does that make sense because um, like since I'm the host I look very similar to the body uh, that I then uh, in, in internally as well as externally whereas everyone else tends to have different um, appearances, species, races, genders, whatever. Um, yeah, um, and so around this point, um, well, a, a few hours later, or a day, or I, I forget when, um, Dolly, one of the uh, other alters, fronted. Um, and she is what is known as a trauma holder. And what that basically means is uh, because DID forms due to repeated trauma, um, the way that the brain prevents the host from experiencing it or remembering it is it creates um, 
alters to store that memory, to relive that experience over and over again so that, so that the host doesn't have to. Um, and so that is the role of a trauma holder. So Dolly has to, whenever she is not fronting or interacting with anyone, um, she, she has to re-remember the memory that caused her to form from the beginning. Now, I don't know what the memory was, but, you know, it's, it's hers to either uh, disclose or not disclose. But um, her art is very, very different from mine. Um, she doesn't use a lot of color, and when she does, it's uh, mostly uh, monochromatic, um, which I find to be very intriguing. Uh, she uses uh, a lot of very different uh, techniques than what I usually do. You know, usually her art is very blurry, very, um, very, I, I don't know how to describe it. The, the brush that she uses is a wet watercolor brush, which is very round, very, um, very light, very subtle. Uh, and then she tends to almost compress her drawing to make it less readable. And then, and then she uses the, um, shoot, what's it called? The, the dots. I forget what the dots are called all the time. But she uses that. And she was actually the first person in the system to start using those uh, little, like, polka dots in her art. And it adds, like, a really nice sort of texture um, to it and makes it look really, I guess, high definition. I, I don't know. <laughs> um, and ever since she started using it, more of us have started slowly integrating it into our art because it it just it just looks good. I don't <laughs> I don't know. I, I love the fact that she uses it. It looks so good. Um, but yeah, yeah. I, I really like Dolly's art. I think it's it's very interesting and it has such a kind of solemn emotion behind it. I think it's very beautiful uh, in that way. Um, and next person who fronted, uh, I think a few hours after that was Flower. Um, now, something interesting about them is um, they were very much, well, they're, they're another trauma holder. Um, they're about 10 years old, and I think they fronted, or, or f first formed, God, God it, it, was, it was a long time ago. Um, and they are a holder of mostly medical or dental-related trauma. Um, and... Um, I mean, hence the, uh, the, as you'll probably see, the, uh, the, the uh, what is it, hospital gown that they wear, uh, which they often draw to resemble a dress, which I think is very interesting. Um, and so s something about their appearance is it was very much influenced by, uh, when I was around, I think, 10, 10 or 11, um, it, it was like 2016 or 2015 or 2014, I don't remember. Um, there was this Vocaloid song, which Vocaloid is... Uh, a bunch of synthetic vocals. Um, there was this Vocaloid song that uh, uh, by the producer Ghost and Pals. Um, very, gr they make great stuff. Uh, and and the specific song was called uh, Hy Hyper. Shoot, what was it called? Um, Hyper something. I, I don't know. I'll look. I'll include the the image of it, which uh, effectively it, it, the the word means. Um, it, it's like a disorder where somebody wants to like pull their own teeth out, right? And uh, the the pulling of teeth in that song were a um, it was a metaphor for structural dissociation, which at the time when I listened to it really resonated with me. Um, and so I guess uh, flower was uh, well flower wasn't made around that time, but you know their appearance fully formed to look like the character from that music video, um, which I think is very interesting. Though the art style is uh, th that they draw with tends to be very different, uh, at least in terms of it's a lot more sketchy. Um, the, the specific way of shading, which you'll see in a moment, um, it's very particular to Flower's art, which I, I really like it. I really like it. You'll see in a little bit. It's, it's very interesting. Um, and kind of unlike anything I've seen anyone else do. <laughs> it's very sketchy, but in a way that's still kind of organized. I don't know. They're getting ready to do it in a little bit, but you know. Um, yeah, a lot of the colors that they use are very sort of washed out. Uh, very off-white, similarly to uh, the kind of colors you'd see in a hospital or a dentist office. Um, usually they draw, uh, outside of this uh, presentation of themselves, they, uh, they'll typically draw mouth gore or any sort of bloody stuff. 
uh, which is a little bit um, perturbing considering they're around 10 years old, but you know, they're working through some stuff, right? Um, but around this time they start shading, which I, I really love watching them do this. So this specific process is very interesting. What, what, what they tend to do is um, they'll draw out they'll map out like specific shapes and then scribble in those shapes to form a shadow. Uh, and then once they finish scribbling in all those shapes, they'll go back and uh, erase uh, specific gaps in, 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 uh, in the shadows to make it even lighter. And it's a little bit messier than hatching and cross hatching, but it's, it's just very visually interesting. Um, you know, actually fun fact. Um, so, so th there are multiple types of consciousness when it comes to somebody fronting. And when I say fronting, I'm referring to uh, when an alter takes control of the body, right? Um, and so uh, the, uh, some, uh, when one alter is fronting and uh, uh, when two alters are fronting at the same time, that is called co-consciousness uh, because they are both aware of each other. Uh, they can conversate with each other both internally and externally by like talking out loud or listening to each other in, 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 the, in the brain, basically. Um, and so, but there's also, if one person is fronting and another person is watching them front, that is called spectating, right? Um, one person is internally watching. You get it, you get it. Um, and so whenever Flower is drawing, especially shading, everyone tends to crowd around them uh, spectating, which is very interesting because, <laughs> well, because everyone really just likes watching, watching them work through the process because it, it's just such a fascinating thing. Like, um, they have such a unique sort of way of going about art that I, I, I find it very intriguing to watch, you know, and, and their specific color palettes are, are very cold and uh, very consistently just theirs, you know, I, I don't know how else to describe it. Um, and then, of course, at the end of uh, the entire process, then they'll bring out the, the half tones. That's what it's called. The, uh, the little dots. Those are called half tones, uh, similarly to how Dolly does it, except they will uh, color them something else and then usually make make that layer inverted uh, an inverted version of the layer under it I don't know how to describe it, but it, it gives the uh, the colors a very specific sort of feeling it's I don't know <laughs> It's just so unique and and very pretty looking. I don't know. I, I love it. I love it. I love their art I love it. Yeah, it, it's, it's very uniquely theirs. I don't know. It's very pretty in that way so the the next person this was who is this? Lenny? Yes, this was Lenny. Um, so I, I, I guess to, to talk about Lenny, I have to explain something. Um, so there, there's a concept of uh, non-human alters uh, when people that are a part of the system um, are internally not presented as human. Um, they understand that the body is human, of course, uh, but they internally are not. Um, it's kind of hard to describe, but basically, because alters are formed by trauma, um, some the uh, concepts that the child is familiar with that is ex undergoing the trauma will typically rush to those concepts for comfort. Um, for for instance, or, or well, <laughs> for instance, if if they uh, were you know undergoing a traumatic situation, they would think, oh, if only this, uh, if only like for instance, a dragon was here to to save me, or. Uh, or a ghost could, you know, scare uh, this person away so I wouldn't have to experience this anymore. You know, like stuff like that. Um, that it, it, because, you know, it's the mind of a child and children tend to be artistically creative, right? Um, but another thing, another reason for non-human alters tends to be that the, uh, the brain is processing that trauma in a way that is metaphorical. Um, for instance, uh, and, and I won't go into graphic detail, but you know, I was uh, <laughs> I was bullied a lot in school, right? And um, because I'm on the spectrum, right? What's something that people tend to uh, be rude to autistic people with? Um, they tend to use a symbolism of like robots because oh, oh autistic people are like non-feeling and, and whatnot um, and analytical like robots. Um, and so <laughs> Lenny is uh, one of the many robot uh, alters we have in the system. And she's very nice. She's um, a mixture of 
like a protector and a caretaker type character. Um, I say character. I, <laughs> they don't like it when I refer to him as that, but y you get what I'm trying to say. <laughs> um, she's she's very nice. She's kind of like a, um, a big sister type person. Um, and she's very sweet, but won't like, y you know, she'll stand her ground, right? Um, I love her. I think she's great. And I really like her art too, because the thing about her uh, art style is it's very simple, very clean. Um, and she's able to pull off having flat colors and not doing any shading uh, because uh, it just adds to the appeal of her art, you know? Um, it, like, yeah, it, it's very clean, kind of flat. And I, I love I love uh, her, uh, the way that her hair look, kind of resembles a motherboard, you know, of like a computer or like a microchip or whatever the hell it's called. I, I, think, I think she looks really cool. <laughs> I, I like her. I love her. She's great. She's great. And she also uses a lot of chromatic aberration. Um, but around this time, which I think this was a day later, um, Flory uh, fronted and f uh, she is a uh, she's another non-human uh, alter she is a ghost um, the ghost of a little girl I think around five six maybe even three um, and she is another trauma holder um, I don't I don't know what she holds uh, our communication isn't the best uh, between us but she doesn't I know she she doesn't like fronting uh, she's usually very quiet very timid um, and with her, she's drawing uh, our dog altar, which which we do have. Um, who is he, well? His name is uh, Perro, which is of course the Spanish word for dog. Um, he's like a little puppy, based off of um, an image that I saw when I was very young of a small dog, a uh, small puppy lying uh, with his head resting on a banana. Uh, and I remember it because, like, that specific image resonated with me a lot. There was just something so weirdly sad and uh, about it and hopeless. And I guess that, that the feeling that it brought up really resonated with me. But I really like Floria's art as well because she uses a lot of very sort of simple shapes to convey, um, very, like, not-so-simple forms. I don't know. I love it. Anyway. His next guy is Benny. I love Benny. So he is uh, he is nonverbal, um, and he really really likes cubist artwork. He likes cubist uh, abstract, uh, kind of postmodern. Like uh, he he really likes the work of Picasso, uh, like Picasso's uh, early portraits and whatnot. Um, he takes a lot of inspiration from those whenever he draws. Uh, he doesn't have a specific style, but he just, in general, likes drawing uh, in a sort of impressionist type uh, art style. He hyperfixates on uh, on that uh, genre of art. Uh, he, I guess, he likes the way it portrays um, kind of solid concepts in a way that is very malleable, uh, for lack of a better word. But yeah, he's uh, he's nonverbal, so communication is a little bit difficult. Uh, but he's a very nice kid. Um, he's around 10, I think, something like that. Um, whenever he fronts, it's it's very hard to speak. Even if he's co-con with someone, uh, co-consciousness, um, it's still very hard to speak. He's, yeah, he, he, he mostly likes communicating through, through art. Um, he's very good at video games, like really good. <laughs> um, he likes uh, instrumental music. I, I, I like his art. It's very simple. It's very... Um, I don't know. It, there's just something about it that that seems very, I don't know, clean. It's nice. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, and next here, well, he's he's still fronting. I think this was a few minutes after he drew his first portrait. Um, and so he is currently drawing uh, another altar we have called Buggy. She uh, she's also known as Wormy or <laughs> or uh, Grubby, right? Because she is a she's a grub. Um, very small. She doesn't have any arms or a mouth uh, or legs or anything like that. Um, and she's another nonverbal alter and uh, she can't really move much other than inching around very slowly. And uh, yeah, so because uh, like, so, okay. So uh, Buggy is uh, what is known as a symptom holder, which what that effe effectively means is um, any sort of ailments that uh, uh, are that the body suffers from tend to be amplified when uh, when she is fronting. 
Um, this could mean, like in our case, like fibromyalgia uh, or anything like that. So whenever whenever he fronts, uh, it tends to be very low energy, you know, kind of just lying down on the floor for an hour or two, um, usually not making any noises, uh, not talking at all, you know, um, just kind of laying there in silence. Uh, which is very interesting, <laughs> uh, so, and I guess the body needs it whenever, uh, whenever he fronts, you know. Um, but because of, because of this sort of lack of energy, um, Buggy doesn't really enjoy artwork very much, uh, and so I'm, I'm I mean I'm, I'm happy that Benny decided to draw him uh, despite this. <laughs> I, I guess their relationship is very close, though I don't know the specifics of it. Um, it's I guess close enough for Benny to want to draw a little portrait of him. Um, which is very sweet. I think that's very sweet. Um, the art style that Benny used for this seems very sketchy, very sort of quick and, and interesting. Um, it, it's, uh, I guess an interesting part of it is the fact that his shading was is very defined. You know, he, he doesn't really blend any of it. He just relies solely on colors and uh, and, and like values, which I've never, I've, I've as Quinn, I, I've never uh, experimented with that before. You know, I always rely on blending and whatnot. And I think it's very interesting that, that he used a, a style that is just so outside of my personal comfort zone. <laughs> I love it. I, I, I always like Benny's art. I, I think it's always uh, an absolute joy whenever he draws. I think it's great. I mean, in general, art is like a nice little way of communication between us. If anyone out there is a uh, system of some sort and is having trouble reaching out to their altars, I would definitely recommend um, pursuing some kind of art, you know, whenever anyone fronts to tell them to draw something. Uh, because that's that's the way that most of us tend to introduce ourselves to each other is through the medium of art. Because, I don't know, I mean, mo most of us seem artistically inclined, so it's it's, I guess, helpful for that to be the case. But, yeah. I don't know. It's always a joy when, whenever someone else decides to draw. You know, it's very easy to be um, supportive of each other uh, and more accepting of each other when, um, <laughs> when, when they draw and you know have have some have a clear cut, I guess, part of themselves uh, portrayed on a canvas. If that makes sense. <laughs> anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed. Um, but I don't know. L let me know if you'd like any more sort of DID related stuff. Um, I'm still in the process of figuring some stuff out, so uh, I, you know, if if I don't return immediately to regular c uploads, that then that's why. <laughs> but you know, having having a whole um, having board meetings in your head every day is, uh, you know, it's 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 quite the challenge, right? But I hope you have a good rest of your day or night or morning, and I'll see you uh, see you next time. Yeah.